Hey guys, so this is a breakdown for uh, one of the projects I did a while ago and I thought I'd uh, just go into detail and break it down and give some insight to how I made it since uh, some of you guys might find it interesting. As you can see there's some progression in uh, just the, the, the design. I, I started off with a, a, ZBrush, a ZBrush sculpt and I just moved on to uh, poly modeling subdivision and just progressed it from there and you can see it uh, take, take its form and evolve and grow and just refine it and refine it and yeah and there's some uh, other shots of uh, someone else inside of it just so it uh, looks well not it looks not just looks like someone can fit someone can fit there's some uh, test renders some lights um, on, the, on the on the design some uh, final shots of the final model there and so here we go so let's have a look at the poly model and yeah it's basically a poly model with the subdivision applied so yeah let's have a look at all the little goodies that we have in here types of uh, details that I uh, kind of placed on there at the time and really show the kind of that level of quality and just explain it and yeah, what I uh, what I did to do it all and, and you can see it's a lot of breakdown um, in all these details. I might uh, switch to the, the flat shade, it might be a little bit too distracting. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just have to change it to user view. This is XSI if uh, no one really knows what it is. Maybe this will be a little bit easier to see things. But yeah, um, there's a lot of details. You can see how I've uh, really just placed in a lot of things. I'll just go over it and have a look. I try to make things more functional as well. Have everything has like a, a bit of a function behind it. This would uh, kind of rotate like that, and then this would this would all come out like this and like that. So a lot, lot of little functions. The more you start opening it up, you know you can start seeing the little ideas that I had. Um, just certain things I, I really started to play with. You can see just yeah, lots of um, lots of love went into it. Lots of N-Gons as well. A lot of N-Gons, so and you can see just like you know trying to play with details instead of this terminating to a square, which I made it round. And lots of little things like that. So um, yeah, just make things look more interesting. A lot of layers. I um, layered things up quite a, quite a lot. As you can see, it's it's really a uh, labor of love, and even things like that, uh, showing uh, different areas where things like you could. Let me just. Oh, I've actually unhit everything. Let me just do that again. So things like that to make it look a little more more interesting when you're looking at that detail from a glance. Yeah, you know, some like ventilation in there, and just to just to add to it. And so, even if no one's going to see it, um, you try and put a little bit more thought into it, but don't go crazy with it, right? So, you, you have to have a limitation of uh, where you're going to end it. But uh, for this one, I uh, really went crazy because I uh, really wanted something um, that would be that would last the test of time. Things uh, really date um, when you don't put the work in, I find. So a lot of the, a lot of the hardware is already there. Not the hardware, I mean the software is there to make things pretty damn good these days. Even even this was uh, years and years ago. So you know, it's kind of just you can see how the layers just adding up layer upon layer of detail. It really uh, makes things. Um, it gives it another kind of another thing you can see how there's you know you got your tertiary you got your secondary and then your primary and so in a way you could explain it that way I'm, I'm not that um, not really strict for terminology I think uh, strict terminology is just a um, way to explain something to uh, someone to better understand it uh, it's it's just one of those things where like if I thought I needed the detail or I needed to do something I'd do it like you can see how 
that, that that was made more interesting even though no one saw that but as you can see if I did a shot like this and say this kind of just it ended up flat and so I like go in there and I delete these faces if I can get in there but yeah just make it more interesting and so yeah just so sort it of looks the left left one here you can see the right one right it just looks a little bit more interesting there's more depth to it that's what you want to do you want to convey the depth from something even though the depth is quite shallow in a way but um there's there's a way of like looking in here it's like there's a lot of depth to looking in there and like you describe it as layers and depth it, there's a lot of things going on and you can see how oh, this is a separate part and that's a separate part there's lots lots and lots and lots of little things that you know, i really put in there and even if you can't see quite under things it's it's almost like you can look into things like you can look into this and so that's my that's my thing of saying depth to things like you can look in here right and so just just conveying that and all these little like latches and things you know, that would uh, move that way but uh, yeah that's just there's like some depth in here but you would say it's layers either way you want to explain it um, however, however you want to explain that but uh, yeah there's lots of little things even uh, behind the neck here I'll hide that like I've got uh, details here and in there lots of little things here just a ton of little little details and I really did my best to spread out the detail like I didn't um, fill out uh, you know there's a lot of blank spaces like this is all blank right and then what I did is tighten up the the areas of detail you know it's very tight in the forehead and in this part here you know I, I, that's what I like to do localize it leave lots of space I'd, I'd probably probably do a little bit more uh, moving forward we're doing new designs like this um, have more space a little bit more space and then have uh, really tight areas where you know this is tight I call it, this is this would be a tight area lots of layers and then it moves on to a, a, a area with, with nothing really on it compared to it right so and you don't even put much texture work on top of it uh, just a little bit of dirt and things like that and, you know, there's a lot of things this one kind of goes around like that it's like a little ventilation and you can see again there's some there's some depth to that you know, I actually made a separate geometry inside there so to add depth and things like that so this is the same thing principle behind it but there's a lot of depth uh, to the design um, and, and its parts and these little mechanisms in here and stuff like that and that would open up and this one is really cool that one there and I'll show you this in another part and yeah you got the ventilation so as soon as you go under the design it really comes alive because there's lots of little things sandwiched in here like if you look at the design like this it's just sandwiched it's got so much there's so much going on but then you go up and then it's like it's just like another thing there and so it changes based on uh, the the way it looks so I, I find it really cool so there's lots of you know things sandwiched and like even up here I sandwiched in design stuff like that so it's yeah as you can see they go right in like a little vent just lots of stuff a little camera here that's a little camera just a lot of little things I'm not sure what else there is to show but um, lots of things like that there's like a little canister in here behind that a little bottle it has a little even little function that uh, even though you don't see it pushes the end of it this will push the bottle at the end there and release some gas so yeah lots of little things like that and that would uh, change it that can change it out release the canister and change it lots of little layers in here you can see in there I almost got to point it out because it's um it's quite hard to see without pointing it out and describing it and you can see this is like sandwiched in in here like sandwich that's sandwiched all together and so I've actually hidden parts of that but you can see how all these tubings have multiple layers this has reinforcements 
here, this is all, you know, this is like holding that in place, holding the tubing in place, all these little things, like, like all bumping against one another, squishing in the, the rubber and stuff like that, this is all like rubber. And so when the neck move, that will, that will all move. And so there's a seal behind the mask here, that's a little seal along there. So lots of little things, some more details, a little thing that's uh, another one here, but yeah. Lots of things. Uh, I really tried to give uh, gravity to things. There's probably lights in there. Like, oh, yeah. I never used them, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the helmet. That's the subdivision uh, thing. Um, subdivided uh, poly model, I should say. You can see how there's lots of sandwiched material. Well, poly, I don't know, construction, whatever um, it is. I have uh, no descriptive words over it. It's, it, it is what it is. But uh, you can see how I've uh, really fit everything and sandwiched it together and made sure I got it really neat. And so it created a very, very good uh, design because it was um, very believable in the materials that was uh, being used and conveyed in it. And so you can see how everything's just separated. But yeah, I'll show you that here. And you can see the profile there. It was... Um, yeah really good profile I made sure I made sure all these things it wasn't just a random occurrence of uh, making a design and yeah I really tuned the hell out of it so um, this is just the scene uh, what I would have as parts so this is um what what is this this is the lattice effect for the vents I wanted to uh, make a just so I probably shouldn't subdivide that Sh subdivide that so that's what I used in the vents um, we have the ear this one is more interesting because uh, I've used um, to mark hard edges so you can see how it's subdivision but it's just each edge has been marked with a, a weight and that's how I did the ear without uh, much topology actually it worked all right. It, cr it created a really crisp result. You could probably use subdivision to do this, but it would uh, create a very um, dense mesh. And it, at the time, I, I didn't really want to deal with that, so I just used that. And uh, I don't think anyone could tell. So that's how you can get uh, really sharp subdivision stuff. Um, but there's lots of different ways to do that these days. But uh, there's lots of different methods to do everything. There's, there's no there's no strict one way to do anything. So and some little lights in there that I never used. For the buttons on the ear, and the little latch. But yeah, that's how the ear part was done with uh, edge weights for um, subdivision, whatever it's called in the other applications, and things like little bolts and stuff that I'll keep up here and, and just grab and use on the on the design. Some more bolts. Yeah. So there was a stand at one point that I was going to use some tubing. I was gonna do as well. I'm not sure. I just never. I, I'm not really one to put tubing on a design. You can see how I put. I put a lot of work into that tubing anyway. Make sure it uh, looked uh, legitimate. Like tubing wood. There you go. <laughs> More detail, but um, I really made sure I wanted that tubing to look like tubing, like a rubber material. There was something else in there, but yeah, that's. I'm not sure what that was from. Yeah, that is the subdivision for the infiltration unit. So, so here's the texture work. Uh, it's just various uh, things that I've applied, layers, different layers, and they just added up all these layers. Got your decals, dirts, in between dirts, just various effects you can see there. So with this, it's uh, the Photoshop uh, part of the breakdown for the infiltration bus, and I uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a bit messy. So bear with me. They're not uh, the neatest uh, Photoshop files, and I'll just go through them and explain little effects and uh, break it down. The uh, what I added to get the renders to look really nice and realistic. So it's kind of um, you can see like there's some spots here. Like the, it's almost like the speckle on the lens. Yeah, but whenever you've taken a picture, you can get a bit of dirt on it. So I've just done that. It, it's barely visible. If I uh, 
probably look at the, the settings for it. There's, there's just different um, soft light effects layered on top. And there you go, you can see a bit more here. They're coming up and showing up. And there's another one. And yeah, you can just see. Um, it's just a little speckle. And I've just, yeah, the, the ones before there. And so try and zoom out. It doesn't, it always zooms out a little too much. I have to scroll, I think. Yeah. Let me, uh... Okay, so there's the spots, just little dirt speckles on the lens. So that's an, that's one effect. Uh, I've got things like dust in the air. That one made a big difference to that one because I really wanted to get the atmosphere to sit right. So yeah, you can see the spots. Uh, what else was there? The dust is basically just something that sits in the air. And we've got some levels. That's before and after. It's pretty dramatic. So you can see that's just tuned with a bunch of uh, different effects. Selective color, curves, hue and saturation, um, color balance, exposure. And so what I do is I just go through and I stack them and tune them and just find that it will be the base uh, one of the ones at the bottom here that did, did the most will be the color balance effect so i just go through each one and i add them i take them away subtract them change the opacity on each layer i, I play with just a bunch of different settings to achieve my look so that's one effect and that's another effect gone so you can see that was pretty dramatic and so this is just a lens um not lens, or lens flare i would say so it's just in the corner there, you can see a little brightness, it's not much, I'll intensify it so you can just see it. It's just the corny um, lens, lens flare in Photoshop and I just edit it a little bit. So I'll take that off and this is the base one. And I've just gone through and slightly edited some little edits, very minor, with some color tunes and kept there and stuff. So this will be the render from the engine from uh, V-Ray, so close to it, it will have some slight uh, tweaks by uh, Magic Bullet. That's just a plugin that I use in Photoshop, but I'll try and find a before and after. So this is another one. This is in the mech bay. So this one has a lot of things happening because it has a UI kind of interface happening on the on the on the camera lens camera. Right, it's like a fake spy shot. So. I'll just go through. I haven't uh, prepped these. I just, yeah, there, there'll be the UI. Eventually I'll get to it. All right, there we go. So that is the breakdown for here. So got some volumetrics. I have the, the tweak here. I think it's just running a bit slow. It's just catching up. The, the file names are, the, the names for things are just a mess. I um, I was working on so many things, I was rushing, so when you're in a rush, you don't really name things, but you name them enough for you to under, understand them, not anyone else. So since I didn't have to hand this off to anyone else, it's, uh, it's all good. And so it's the same treatment for stacking on layers. I like to tune the yellows right. You can see that before and after the, the yellow will uh, take effect in one of these. But uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of different, uh, just color balance, like the color. And yeah, so I always um, did that to, to, to the kind of last effect and to, to add on to my renders to, to tune things. Because color and color tuning is a huge, huge part of getting a render to look good. Because you can get to before and after there, just making things look more appealing, getting getting the colors and getting the brightness is everything. Like there are so many people who don't tune their renders enough. They might tune them a little bit, but they're not doing enough. Like they're not pulling enough information from them. They kind of give up or just like, ah, that's good enough. But you really, if you want to render and you want it to like look really good, you're your own kind of movie maker almost. Like you, if you watch a really good movie and they have this awesome cinematography, it's because someone sat there and tuned the hell out of it. And, if you love a movie and the way it looks, it's because they sat there and they've done this. 
and I, I'd spend a very long time tuning it because this was one I really wanted to be a show winner. So, um, yeah, that's that's the breakdown for that one, and everything else is, is pretty similar. I could probably show some. Uh, I'll show those in other ones. There's some volumetric passes there, and so I'll do another one. So this is the desert scene. There's some levels to that, so you can see the difference before and after. Because this wouldn't be the final from the render from V-Ray, but it will kind of be close to it. And I'll just do the same thing, getting those colors right, because you know you, you don't have all the colors right in the render engine, rendering engine. And so you just get to go through and tune your colors, and you can see how you'll go through so many little changes and I'll leave, leave some old ones there to maybe try again um, certain color values and might change your mind and might like things so I'll take those off and so you can see this is the base one for here so this is all like the volumetric passes to produce like a sandstorm effect and to give emphasis on to the character and so um, these volumetric passes are pretty much depth passes inverted. And so I would uh, just add those to add a sandy effect and also uh, like a, it's almost like a fog in the background. And so this one would uh, give, that one would uh, give more fog and it's just so the character looks like it's, it's really sitting in it. Like it gives a really nice atmosphere. And so you can see before and after that one that really punches it out. So with a lot of things, when you're rendering and you're trying to do a render, and you want to make a character stand out, you need to make a character stand out. You can't just plop it in a scene and have a back background with all this stuff. You know, you, you're better off rendering against a black background. So if you want your character to show off, um, just render against the black background, get it done because it's not going to overcomplicate uh, the work that you need to project like you need to get the character to show itself because if you're showing off a design you might as well just show it off you um, shouldn't shouldn't fuss and this is this this was more of a going in a direction because I knew I couldn't um, make a big background so I had to figure out a way you know, how how can I can represent that and I figured out a way and it was like this kind of dust deserty thing and it's perfect right because in the desert you're the only one that stands out because nothing's there so this was why uh, thinking behind it and it just gave it a really cool atmosphere and you can see how I'm taking off more layers there uh, what was this one that one is still just some tuning in the background I blurred the background because this is the, the rendering of the background in here so I blurred that and it was a very low res background I didn't need it to be a high res background it's just a random scene from somewhere of a desert and yeah that that's the base one this has still got magic bullet on it you can see some uh, lens uh, it's almost like a diffusion and a, a glow to the metal and so that's what um, uh, magic bullet does so I'm trying to find if I do have a, a pre existing magic bullet I think there might have been yeah this is close to it just with a bit of lens flare so this is pretty much something without any effects on top it just looks very dry and um, yeah not great right so very bland and so you can you can see how you layer a lot of effects on there you can make it really pop and have a life so it's, I think where a lot of people they kind of don't push their renders enough and yeah I think you're just losing out so um, this is a dust storm one this is a good example of um, just uh, some effects I have uh, drawn on top so let's see where the original lies. So I have a bunch of effects. Again, I'm not uh, too sure. because I'll go back and I'll constantly tweak these things because I might sit on it for like three or four days and just even between another another job or something like that because it would take so long to render these. It would take up to uh, 15 hours, 20 hours to render one. And this was years ago, right? This is like eight, eight, nine years ago, whatever, how long ago it was. And I didn't even have a machine to render these on well on. So um, you could see how I've just gone through the same things, tweaked the hues and blacks, and like I've gone throughs and yellows and 
I go through and I, I have a color palette that I have in mind and I have a general color palette that I like and so I will go towards those colors and I've just done it for so long that I have a I have that feeling so I'll tune it towards that feeling I'm going for and so there we've taken those effects off top off, off the top there just the color tuning and then we've got the Sun and you can see how I've just done a bit of Sun lens flare um, all that stuff uh, some lightness bringing up the lightness in the where the Sun is coming from to show where the Sun is coming from to the viewer you can see it's in the top right there and so we'll take the sun away and let's see um, we have some I think I uh, tweaked the background because the background is getting too bright so I, I, I brought down the levels to make sure the background wasn't too blo blown out and now we have some sand effects and so that's an interesting one right that really adds to that I, I um, wanted to kind of have that atmosphere of like he's he's kind of he or she's going through the desert and basically you know, it's, just, it's you're caught in that. You got like a picture of the the person in the desert area going through, and just with the sand kind of coming off the the helmet, and it just adds a really good atmosphere. And so I have a bunch of uh, layers. I did three or four layers because I would to make up to make up effects. You need to make up the layers of the effect. You know, things don't happen in one layer. They happen in four to five effects, right? And so the more you build up layers, the more you have that realism of the of the effect. And so you can't, the thing is you can't really go wrong when you build things up in layers. Things tend to work better when you build up, build up in layers. Usually, if you have a really good understanding of things, metals and all that stuff, and how things interact with the world, how things, you know, uh, do everything else with, with everything else, So right? So you can see how I've got certain sound effects, I have uh, different sound effects hitting um, different parts and I'll go through and paint each one of those effects and really the sound effect is just from a um, so I have or overall sound effect and then sand on the face and the head sand and like the outside sand like these are just the layers that I did at the time and th the way I did those sound effects was I just got a material and I made a new layer and you add a noise to it and then you set a dissolve um, under in Photoshop, and, it, and what it does is well, I can probably quickly do it. Let's see if I haven't done it for years. So I've got that effect there, and then I set it to a dissolve, and it will just dissolve off from there. And then you give it some blur, and you blur it, and that's how you do a sand effect. And it's pretty damn easy. I think I have to um, either collapse that down into a new layer, so it's. Uh, sticks with that uh, dissolve effect so the layer is no longer a dissolve effect I've merged it down to another layer and then I just a bit of Gaussian blur and yeah you've got that like looks pretty sandy and you just go in oh, control shift you just desaturate it and you should just blur it like that and you can see it, like it's, it's similar effects and just like that and yeah you've got a bit of sand because that's what it would look like under motion Okay, let's take that effect off. So, uh, I'm not sure what this one is. I have got so many ran random names. So that is another tune. Because I thought I still didn't like it. And I wanted to tune it. A lot of these took a long time to get the tuning right. They really did. But once you have that tuning, it's uh, it's pretty easy to then kind of make it work against everything else. Like cause you have so many, well, against, well, you have the other renders and you can just drop it into the other renders. So um, there's some heat effect in the corners of the helmet. So you can see there, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's just the heat around the, you, the helmet. It's like when you look in the desert, you see that heat effect and that just adds another effect, right? So I just did that with, um, uh, what is it? Uh, one of the blur effects, uh, the radial blur, and I just duplicated the image and then um, radial blurred the whole image and erased the part I uh, didn't want. So uh, yeah, and uh, basically that is it. I had I used to have the lights on the ear part. I got rid of them. They were too um, too obvious, and uh, I didn't want to bring the the viewer's eye to the the ear here. I wanted to bring the viewer's eye to the eyes. So and then um, like let the viewer have. You know, well, I'm directing the viewer on how it looks at the the helmet and how it's taking everything in. So I knew I knew if I had the ear lights there, 
like there on the on the, it just looks a bit shiny and it's a bit corny here so I just took them away and uh, it just it worked a lot better because there's a lot of ideas that you might want to get rid of and don't be afraid to do that because you're constantly directing your work so but yeah that is the breakdown for um, the Photoshop files for for that one so this is the final renders there's some shots before and after Photoshop effects just to show what those RAWs look like from uh, V-Ray and the final renders for uh, some of the shots it was a pretty big project I enjoyed uh, enjoyed it in some ways and I hated it in a lot of ways but like anything difficult in life um, you got give and take in a way so I hope you guys got something from this and yeah until next time guys I hope you all uh, take care